or I'm doing it for my mother who suffered by the Khmer Rouge. It's important for my mothers, and I'm doing this for her. And then, you know, uh, I also discover a thousand of mothers also suffer, even worse than my own. So the work is dedicated to my own mother, to the old woman in Cambodia. Well, thank you for having me here. It's amazing. Hello all. Tonight, my client Brian Ben and I have the honor of presenting the Judith Lee Stronach Human Rights Award to one of the most remarkable human rights defenders in our field, Mr. Yuk Chang. As the director of the Documentation Center of Cambodia, an organization that has spent the past two decades uncovering the truth behind Cambodia's notorious killing fields, Mr. Chang has taught us that there can be no recovery from mass atrocities and no reconciliation without confronting the past. Between April 1975 and January 1979, nearly two million Cambodians perished under the brutal communist dictatorship of Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge. The mass graves of innocent civilians scattered throughout the country became commonly known as killing fields. Cambodians that survived had to live amongst these ghosts, fearing that the horrors they experienced would be forgotten by the next generation without understanding the truth behind these crimes. Uncovering this truth and documenting these crimes has been an almost singular pursuit of Yuk Chang. Mr. Chang, himself a survivor, was 14 when the Khmer Rouge came and forced him from his home and into a labor camp. He came to the U.S. as a refugee after experiencing starvation, torture, and the death of his young pregnant sister. Upon returning to Cambodia, Mr. Chang established the Documentation Center and embarked on the enormous task of documenting the evidence of mass atrocities nationwide. DC CAM researchers traveled from province to province collecting official documents, massing, mapping mass graves, and collecting the oral histories of survivors and former Khmer Rouge soldiers. For many, this was the first time they spoke of the crimes that they witnessed or experienced. To date, DC CAM has collected more than 1 million documents, interviewed thousands of survivors, identified 20,000 mass graves, and nearly 200 prisons throughout Cambodia. Because of Yuk Chang's efforts, Cambodia's history will not be forgotten by this generation, nor by any future generation. Important, yes. <laughs> body of evidence DC CAM developed made prosecutions of Khmer Rouge officials necessary. Now, four decades after the crimes took place, a UN-backed tribunal in Cambodia convicted the two most senior surviving leaders of the Khmer Rouge for crimes against humanity and sentenced them to life in prison. This profound act of accountability simply could not have been possible without the testimony of the survivors and the work of Yip Chang and the Documentation Center. During the trial, CJA's client, Sophie Bay, who lost 100 members of her family, including her three children during the Khmer Rouge, was asked why she agreed to testify. She said, if those dead family members do not find justice, I believe that I will not be able to die in peace. As a mother of my children, as a daughter of my parents, I want to find justice for them. Mr. Chang, because of your work, you have provided so many and countless other survivors with the truth they need to find that peace. And for that tonight, we honor you. the story of millions of Cambodians was submitted 
as evident to the International Court in Cambodia. My story, Mr. Chen, just like you. And it's inspired me to see another survivor achieve so much on behalf of Cambodian victims. Like you, I was a teenager when the Khmer Rouge came and pushed me and my family out of our home in Phnom Penh. I, like you, was starved, worked to exhaustion, and imprisoned for innocent acts. I love my beloved brother, Surin Ben, who only crime was being a brilliant medical student in a regime that criminalized education. I love my father, a well respected officer in the generation. I too came to the U.S. like you as a refugee. And here I have tried to make sense of what happened to my family. Even to me, this crime seemed too cruel to be true. I have spent my life trying to educate young Cambodians about their history, collect stories of other survivors to preserve their memory, and help heal the trauma that remain in my community of refugees in the U.S. Mr. Chan, your work documenting the evidence of this crime, educating Cambodian and the world about what happened to our people, gives me hope. You have given a chance to victims to tell the story of we have long feared to reveal. For this, I am forever thankful to you and to your organization for helping put the broken pieces of our community back together. And it is my great honor to present you with this award. ខ្ញុំសូមគោរពនឹងសូមថ្លៃអំណរគុណដល់ជ្រៀលជ្រៅចំពោះលោកយកឆានដែលបានកើតខំចំណាយពេលវេលាដល់មានតម្លៃស្
Uh, thank you to the uh, Center for Justice and Accountability for your forgiveness and having me here today uh, to receive this award. Um, I actually did not want to come in the first place, it was the shins. Because I don't get used to uh, receive the award and to me, uh, actually to me this is a, a reminder. This is a pressure actually. That I, that's, uh, that I gotta use uh, to remind myself on a daily basis that thing I should have do more. Uh, crime doesn't end at the tribunals. It's continuing to happen. That I should be more open, uh, more soft than the thing that has been so aggressive. Uh, it's gonna be serve as reflection on my work on a daily basis. And I am here to accept this award. Uh, for my, on behalf of my own mothers who suffer by the crime that's committed by the Khmer Rouge and thousands of mothers in Cambodia and all the women who were the majority of the survivors that had put back this broken country together after the fall of the regimes, uh, who continue to suffer today, many of them, and live under poverty. So again, thank you for these uh, special and gentle reminders that I can uh, work harder and we hope that one day a crime of genocide can be prevented. Thank you.